So this is a, a revision uh, demonstration as you've already used collateral compaction um, as part of the CSB skills course. But we're just going to go through it again uh, and how it may differ when you are using um, rotary instrumentation and particularly using wider canals. So um, the first step um, is to select your finger spreader. Um, so you know what you prepared the canal to. So in this case, it's to an F2. So that means it's a 25 MAF size with a taper of 8%. So that means that essentially you're looking at either a B or a C um, finger spreader. This is a C finger spreader. And you want to get the finger spreader to within two to three millimeters of um, the working length. So it's a curved canal. So we need to curve our finger spreader. And just put a little bend in it so that it will follow the curve. Put it into the canal see where it goes to okay so that's going to within a couple of millimeters so we're happy with that the bigger the um, finger spreader that you use the more compression and compaction of the GP you will get using the smaller ones you tend to just bend the finger spreader rather than compact and compress the gutta perca so we're going to use the match cones from the pro taper system so we've got an f2 match cone here if you've used a wave one, there are similar match cones, which are actually the same geometry. And we're going to try that in with the canal still having some irrigant in it, just to let it to slip to length. So we know that that goes to length. Pinch it there, take it out again, use our endo measuring block, and check that it's going to length, which it does. Next step is to dry the canal. Again, we have match cones so open those up place a cone in just to dry it off place another one in it should come out dry if the canal is dry which it does then take our cone, a very, very small amount of sealer is what we're going to use. You're just going to lightly butter the cone with sealer. Common mistake that I see all people make is to have masses and masses of sealer. You don't need that because if you compact the gutta perca well, you don't need a lot of sealer to fill in the voids. It's only when you don't compact the gutta perca very well that the sealer needs to fill in a big void. So small amounts of sealer. Put that in. Just gently pump it up and down just to get the sealer to flow. And then take your finger spreader. Apply the finger spreader on the outside of the curve and push down quite firmly. So it won't go as far as it would have done previously because obviously there's gutta perca there now. Push it down, compress the gutta perca, hold for two or three seconds and then twist and release. Then you're going to take an accessory cone, bearing in mind that the accessory cones must match the finger spreader that you've selected. So in this case, you're going to have size C accessory cones or auxiliary points as it says on the box. Take the cone, apply again a small amount of sealer, and place it in the space that you've created with your finger spreader. Take the finger spreader again, Insert like so, hold two or three seconds and then just twist to release. Same again, get another auxiliary cone, cone or accessory cone, sealer and then place into the canal and you probably get two or three accessory cones in a tooth that's been prepared like this. Hold for two or three seconds and then pull out. 
Last one going in. And that's fine. Now you have to sear off the excess gutta perca. A variety of ways you can do this. Most commonly is using a heated instrument. So use the safe heat device and a spoon excavator. I'm just going to switch that on actually. <laughs> is it on? So use a safe heat device, heat the tip up and then sear off at orifice level like so. Then get the plugger. And as the GP is still soft, just plug in at the top. And that will leave you space to put a small amount of restorative material to act to lock it into place. Like so. And that's the obturation completed.